The following program is transcribed from an earlier network broadcast. The Clock. Sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. Broadcasting Company presents another in a series of dramatic programs, The Clock. From Hollywood, The Clock stars Kathy and Elliot Lewis, the airwave's most distinguished acting couple, and is produced and directed by radio's master of the art of suspense, William Spear. The meaning and value of time appears to vary according to age. For the infant, time is merely an unnecessary interval between feedings. For the child, it is an impatient interlude which he must tolerate before growing up. The young man looks at time as a series of steps which will lead him to success. The aged remember it with affection and sometimes regret. Time fills an important niche in the lives of every one of us. And it can only be ignored and forgotten by the dead. Good evening, madam. Good evening. May I help you? Yes, I... I want to buy a coffin. If you'll step this way, we have a large selection. I want a good one. Comfortable inside. It's for my husband. I see. But we don't usually sell our caskets without taking over all other arrangements on behalf of the bereaved. When the time comes, you'll take charge. It's all right with me. Ah. When the time comes, madam... This looks like a good one. What's the price? Price is included in the overall amount of the entire funeral. Satin is nice. You like it in here. The casket is a strong one, completely airtight. Airtight? Oh, yes, madam. That's no good. Oh, but all our caskets are airtight, madam. You can drill some holes in this one, can't you? Now, really, madam, I'm afraid this is all very irregular. I'm Mrs. We... Nikki Kane. Oh. Well, in that case, sure. All his life he's been afraid of being buried alive. Suffocating in an airtight box. He made me promise that he'd be buried in one that would let him breathe. Breathe, madam? That's the way he is. And I want to do it the way I promised. We'll drill three holes in the lid on top if you wish. You won't forget. You can rely on it, madam. One thing more. He doesn't want to be embalmed. You bring him down here to your place as is. Don't touch him. Are you sure? You want the business, mister? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Then do as I say. You pick him up and bring him here. I'll bury him myself. When should we call for the deceased, madam? Next Tuesday. Midnight. But that's five days from now. He won't be dead until then. And where shall we call? Death house. State prison. My husband's getting the chair. For murder. <laughs> for the coffin? Yeah, yeah, I did everything you said. Then leave the rest to me. You're smart, Slade. I'm dependent on you. I, I, uh, I bribed a trustee to drug the prison doctor. Yeah. He'll be unconscious in his quarters from ten until two. I'll arrive at the prison at eleven and say he called me to take his place. I've, uh, I've done it for him before, you see. Yeah. What, what about the chair? I'll be the last to examine the electrodes. I'll have a small wire clipper in my hand. The current won't reach him, Lou. Do you think we can get away with it? Well, with any kind of a break, hands a little luck. When are you seeing him? Tomorrow. For the last time. I want to make sure he knows just what to do. Yeah. Uh, who's that? I don't know. Yes? Well, you don't remember me, do you, Mrs. Kane? Well, it's the penalty of our profession. When people meet us, their bereaved state of mind, their thoughts being only on the dear departed... The mortician. Who is it, Lou? It, it's the gentleman who's arranging... 
you know, the, the arrangements for Nikki's burial. Uh, Mr. Bryce, I take it this is Dr. Slade. May I come in? Yes, yeah, sure. It's most fortunate that I find you together. What do you want? Uh, I have been a mortician. My father before what me. What do you want? <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me for being garrulous. We have time. So much time in my profession. Lou, did you I... ask him here? No. Uh, no, 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 she didn't. I'm here as the result of a rather natural curiosity about a, an unnatural circumstance. Air holes in a coffin. I told you why. But I didn't believe Now, you. wait a minute. Oh, please. Please, I'm not finished. Dr. Slade, what are your plans for next Tuesday midnight? Why, I, I, I think... I believe, sir, that next Tuesday midnight we'll find you in attendance at the execution of this dear lady's husband. Why? Called there due to the sudden indisposition of the prison. Hello. How much did you tell him? He's been listening at the door. No, 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 no. Believe me, I wouldn't think of eavesdropping. It's all a simple deduction. Now, look, Mr. Uh, uh, Bryce. Look, Mr. Bryce. I think we can see our way clear to paying a reasonable fee for your... Uh, <clears throat> time and trouble. And don't forget, after this is over, it will be just as much to your disadvantage to talk about this matter as it will be ours. That's true. Well, that's so very true. And that's why I've come to you now. Our time is so limited, all of us. Don't you agree? A cliché, perhaps, but so true. Here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hello, Nikki. Oh, baby. Good to see you. Hey, you're looking... You're looking okay. I... I got regards from you. Uh, from Slade. We... We've been spending a lot of time together. He's a good guy to know, baby. He's smart. Yeah. Well, this is the last time I'll see you, baby. Yeah, I... I know. Take care of yourself after I'm gone. I love you, Nikki. And I love you. Can a guy say goodbye to his wife without some screw listening in? Take it easy, Kane. I don't like it any more than you do. Can you still hear? No. All right, everything's set. Yeah, yeah. No mistakes now. No. Remember, I killed that guy for you. Don't let me down. Oh, Nikki. Don't you trust me? I'm coming back to you, baby. Dead or alive, I'm coming back. I don't go no place without you. Oh, I'll be waiting, Nikki. Hi. I, I guess this is goodbye. Try not to cry too hard for me, baby. And don't bury me too deep. <laughs> What do you mean? I mean, okay. You mean you got him out? Well, sure. What's the matter with you? You don't sound very happy about it. Oh, yeah, I... It's, it's just... It, it, it seems so impossible. I, I I just didn't believe you could really bring it off. Oh, well, I did. I pronounced him dead and saw them put him inside the coffin. We're uh, we're taking him down to the undertakers now. We? Who? Uh, the mortician. Uh, that fellow Bryce. Uh, he was here watching the whole thing. Did you tell him to, Lou? No. No, I suppose he just wants to keep his eye on you until he gets paid. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Did it look good? Oh, yes, yes. I made sure he'd play it to the hilt. I slipped him a pill just before they gave the signal. Yeah? Why, well, Nicky slumped in that chair like he'd been hit by 10,000 volts. But uh, he just passed out for a while. I, I felt his pulse. Yeah. Well, what now? Well, we're going down to the funeral parlor just to make it look good. Then he can duck out. He'll be there, Lou, inside an hour. few hours. 
Oh, but you're alive, Mickey. They didn't touch you. They didn't even touch you. Oh, oh, come on and sit down and rest up for a few minutes. You're safe now. You're safe, Mickey, with me. Did you make any plans? Oh, no. I, I, I just wasn't sure what to do. Can we risk taking the train? Would it be better to go by car? Go where? Oh, anywhere away from here. We'll start all over again where nobody can recognize you. There are thousands of places, and I got my things all packed. Oh, we can leave with... No hurry. Mickey, what's the matter? Nothing. The face looks funny. Yeah? Why do you look at me like you don't even see me? I see you, baby. Nice and clear. Yeah? I know where you can get a car, Nicky. Slade picked one up for us yesterday. He put it in a parking lot. I got the ticket and the key. Hand him over. But don't you think it's better if you stay here and well, I went to get... Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Hand him over. Yeah, all right, Nicky. Okay, whatever you say. The, the lot's on the southwest corner. The tether. address is on the ticket, eh? Yeah. Oh, I'll find it. Nicky. What? You know, he... You haven't even kissed me yet. Haven't I? Don't... Don't you even want it? Sure. The phone. No, I'm not going to answer. Then go ahead and answer it, baby. Go on. Okay. Hello? Hello, Lou. Slade. Oh, Slade, I'll never forget you for this as long as I live. You were just wonderful. Lou. Lou, I got bad news for you, Lou. Bad news? Yes, yeah, something went wrong. You mean they found out? They're after him? Worse, Lou. Well, well, we still got time to get away. We'll be out of town inside listen a half... Listen to me, Lou. Listen to me. It's finished. What's finished? The mortician. Mr. Bryce just called me. He's homesick. Well, what are you talking about? He and I took the coffin to his place, and then I left him, Lou. I, I was beat. Yeah, yeah? Well, it turns out he caved in himself a couple of minutes after I left. Just passed out. Virus X or something. Yeah? Yes, sir. They took him home right away. He, he couldn't even talk. So, Lou, his partner took over. What are you trying to tell me, Slade? The partner didn't know, Lou. He wasn't in on it. He took one look at Nicky, doped up from the pill I gave him. Well, what is it? What is it? They embalmed him. They embalmed Yes. Nicky's dead, Lou. Nicky? What's the matter? Bad news, baby? Nicky? Why don't you hang up the phone if it's bad news, baby? No, I... I'm sorry it was bad news, baby, on the phone. I dreamed it. I dreamed it, didn't I, Nikki? I dreamed it. Come over here, Lou. No. No, don't don't touch me. Don't you love me no more? But but Slade. Never mind about Slade. Nicky, Nicky, go back. Go back where? Wherever you came from. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. I don't go nowhere without you, Mm. baby. I told you that before. Please, please go away, Nicky, please. There's no way to treat your husband, Lou, not after all I went through. Remember the guy you were married to before you married me? Yeah, I remember. I killed him, baby. I killed him for you. And I took the rap without squawking. Stretch out your hand, Nikki. My hand, baby? Yeah. I want to touch it. Go ahead. Did you really get away? Nikki, I can, I can feel your skin. I'm here, ain't I? What more do you want? <laughs> and then you're alive. You, <laughs> you're not a ghost, Nikki. You're alive. I'm here. Oh, no. What a fool I've been. I couldn't believe it. Don't you see seeing you before and then talking to Slade? Forget about Slade. I should have known you'd be smarter than all of us, Nicky. Sure, I'm smarter. I should have known that. Get your coat, Lou. My my coat? It's getting cold outside. You might need it. Where are we going, Nicky? Remember how we used to go riding together? Well, we'll go for a nice long ride, baby. And we'll see the dawn come up together. Life is a tour which all must make. 
But for some, the distance is covered in a shorter time. Although the highway is well marked, the traffic only moves in one direction. And one-way tickets are the rule. But who can say that there has never been a traveler who has cured round trip? Slade? Yes? It's Lou. Gee, Lou, you shouldn't have come over here. Oh, I'm beat. This thing has knocked me for a loop. Don't close the door. Huh? Why not? I just want it open, that's all. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm full of pills. I'm sorry about what happened, kid. Yeah. Tell me what happened in the death house, Slade. Oh, why don't you try to forget about it? I want to know, Doctor. Well, just before they strapped him in the chair, Lou, I moved over to talk to him as if I wanted to make it easier. He wouldn't let the chaplain come into the room so I could get away with it. As I covered him with my back, he took a pill. Go on. Then they, uh, <clears throat> they slipped the electrodes on him and I made a final examination. That's when I cut the wires. Uh, a couple of minutes later, I pronounced him dead and that mortician, that uh, Mr. Bryce, put him into the casket. Why didn't you stay at Mr. Bryce's until Nicky came too? I told you, Lou, I was beat. When he called me and told me that Nicky had been embalmed, I got so mad I, I, I could have killed someone. What did you tell Bryce to do? Well, I, I told him to bury him. He's buried. Where is he buried? Northridge Cemetery. How could they bury him so fast? The guy made a mistake, Lou. He has to cover just as much as we do. So he hasn't buried him yet. Before morning, he said. He'll have to have him buried before morning. What? What's the matter, Lou? You look like you don't believe me. I thought we could trust you. I did my best. I wonder. The risk was big. Nicky knew that. Anyway, anyway, what difference does it make? It's all over now. But I'll... I'll make up for it, as I said. How, Slade? Well, you know I've always been nuts about you, Lou. No, I didn't know. Ever since you married Nicky, I've been eating my heart out. You weren't for him. He was an uneducated gorilla. How could he know what kind of a woman he had? Nicky never knew you felt like that, and neither did I. You know it now, baby. And I, I would have done anything to get you. Including double-crossing Nicky? What? Now, wait. I, I didn't double-cross him. No, you bet you didn't. What? Well, what do you mean? Nicky's alive. Alive? Ah, you're crazy. They didn't embalm him. He got out of that funeral parlor, and he's alive. But that, that's impossible. Sure, it's impossible. What? Nicky! You don't look so glad to see me. You couldn't have gotten away. No. Lou, Lou, you've got to be leaving. I heard enough. Don't come near me. Don't come near me, Nicky. What's the matter? You scared, Slade? You want a gun? Here, take mine. What do you want from me? Why did you come back? He came back to thank you for that cross. All right. I'll admit I crossed him, but it wasn't at the undertaker's. Don't be scared, Slade. You got a gun. I didn't cut the electrodes. I lied to you, Lou. They shot 10,000 bolts through his body. You've got to believe me. They killed him in that death house. I saw them do it. Yeah, you were there, all right. He's dead. He's dead, I tell you. He's dead. Mickey! <laughs> <laughs> You're all out of bullets, Slade. He's dead. He never did have a very good ticker. But you... You aren't even scratched. He always was a lousy shot. He stood... Five feet from you, and fired point blank, and you aren't even scratched. Come on, Lou. We gotta be on our way. Nikki. Where are you taking me? What difference does it make? Because I'm afraid of you. Why? I don't know why. There's nothing to be afraid of, Lou. Mickey, please. Please, if you ever had any love for me at all, let me out. Please let me out and go away. Just go away somewhere so I'll never see you again, please. And just leave me in peace. I ought to. But I don't go no place without you, Lou. I told you that before. 
What time you got, Lou? It's nearly six. Dawn will come up pretty soon now. Where are we going? Please, you still haven't told me where are we going. We'll be there in a little while. How are you feeling? I'm all right. Remember this road, Lou? No. You ought to remember. We drove out this way the night we got married. That was a thousand years ago. That's how I feel, too. We stopped at a roadside bar a little ways up, remember? It was that all-night joint with the jukebox in the corner. And we danced. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's when I told you first that I'd never leave you. That's when I said you couldn't get away from me. For the rest of your life. And you were right, Nicky. You were... Lou, how about a drink and another dance for old time's sake? We're coming to it. There's the bar at the end of the road. Let's stop there just once more. All right, Nicky. Whatever you say. We'll have a last night, Cap. Together. Joint's empty. But the lights are on. The barkeep must be here. He's inside, maybe taking a snooze. We don't need him. Let's find him, huh, Nicky? I said we Let's don't look. need him. There's a bottle on the bar and a couple of glasses. He won't mind if we help ourselves. Yeah. Drink up, Lou. <laughs> There's no hurry, is there? We can't waste time. I only got till sun up. Well, how, how, how about that dance? You got a nickel? Yes, yeah, sure, I think so. Stick it in the jukebox. Get something sweet. I felt when I got you. You're still lucky. Oh, no, no, baby. My luck's run out. What do you mean, Nicky? I'm tired, baby. I'm awful tired. I only got till sunup. Why do you keep saying sunup? What's going to happen at sunup? I thought I was dead. And I didn't mind it at all. Then I heard maybe I was going to stay alive, and that was better. And then Bryce told me... Reminds me, I owe a guy some money. What? Sit down here, baby. Stay right here, baby. Nicky, where are you going? Don't be afraid anymore, baby. It's going to be all right now. This is Nikki Kane. Oh, yes, Mr. Kane. I'm glad to hear from you. I just remembered I owe you some money. Shall we meet someplace? Yeah. Northridge Cemetery. You're supposed to be burying me at 6 a.m., aren't you? Why, yes, yes. I... I'll see you there. Everything goes satisfactorily? I guess so. You cut the electrodes so I'm alive. You told him I'd been embalmed, so Slade's dead. I guess so. I, I've never done anything like this before, Mr. Kane. Of course, I could use the money, but mostly my sympathies swayed me. That's so. Yeah, you, of course, inevitably must pay your debt to society, but I could not resist a poetic desire to see that you and your wife spent your last hours together. I suppose I'm being romantic. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Who 
What did you call, Mickey? The music stopped. Well, come on, baby. We've got to keep on the go. It's time we got started again. We're almost there, Lou. We stop on top of this hill. Why, this... This looks like... Yeah. It ain't a bad place as these places go. It's a cemetery. Why are you taking me to the cemetery? Get out, Lou. Meg? Open the door. Get out. Right over there in the second row. Ground's frozen. Oh, Becky. That's all right, baby. It's all right. Why did you bring me here? I told you so many times before, but I'll say it again. You don't go no place without me, baby. We stick together. Always. Somebody sent flowers. That was nice. Did you send the flowers, Lou? Oh, no. Must have been Mr. Bryce. That reminds me, i got to leave this envelope for him to take care of the arrangements. They dug it nice and deep, too. What? They dug it nice and deep. Deep enough for both of us. That's good. No. Let go of my arm, Nikki. It's getting to be time. And don't be afraid, Lou. Here. Here's the gun. No. No, Nikki. Please. Take please. It, baby. No. You can't no. hurt me. Go ahead. You can't hurt me. Please. Nikki, please. Go on, baby. Please. There's four shots in it. This time they're not blanks. You gotta get me with one of them. <laughs> Aren't you coming with me, baby? I can't, Mickey. <laughs> you want me to help you? Baby. First our pleasures die, and then our hopes, and then our fears. And when these are dead, the debt is due. Dust claims dust. And we die, too. From Hollywood, the clock is produced and directed by William Spear and stars Kathy and Elliot Lewis. This evening's play was written by Lawrence Clee with music composed by Bernie Green and conducted by Basil Adlam. Next week, same time, listen to... The Clock. Now, here's a special program note. For an authentic crime case involving a crooked jockey plus helpful protection hints, be sure to hear the official This Is Your FBI. This Is Your FBI tomorrow night. The preceding program was transcribed earlier for rebroadcast at this more convenient time. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.